Joe's Inner Child Podcast. So Tracy, in case you didn't hear Little Robot, this meeting is being recorded. How are you doing today? doing great thanks how are you i'm doing fantastic uh my name is joe it's wonderful to meet you i before i ask you questions i love how much purple is behind you because it's my favorite color i love your keyboard look at like <laughs> my ring that my fiance got me is purple like, it is so I, I my whole office is purple like everything is like my everything i love, I love, I love the color but yeah. let's let's talk about you and not just uh, what I want to talk about. So <laughs> I I know that you're promoting. I think you should leave. Um, and you're in episode five. Um, mm-hmm. I I can't remember if it's called. I thought there were five people at the table or something like that. But I yes. watched it, yeah. and uh-huh. and and I had seen your scene, and I was wondering if you were if you had uh, tried out or like if you had auditioned for a skit or if they approached you specifically for this specific sketch? This one was old school. Um, This one, and and it's kind of a funny story because we get these auditions in all the time, especially during the pandemic. And this was right before the pandemic got bad. And I got an audition in and and I just kind of crank them out. I have my taping set up down the hallway and, you know, and, um, a year goes by and you never think about it again. Like, I don't know, when I started out years and years ago, it's like, I'd always be, Oh, I didn't hear from that person, but literally never thought about it again, except for that the material was so funny that I did recognize it. And they're like, yeah, are you available? And then the casting director said to my manager, she said, well, does she still look good? <laughs> so my, my manager like sent another audition and just so she'd know that I didn't gain the, you know, the pandemic 50. <laughs> that you still got that smile and that hair. And they're like, oh, she makes a cut. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it was kind of fun. For me, I mean, you love it when you get in a, an audition like that with, with people who work in a genre that isn't your most well-known genre. And I love comedy. I did comedy growing up. I trained at Ground Lanes. I did all that stuff. And here's these guys doing the Saturday Night Live sketch show, you know, of, it's like I'm so down, but so with that scene, uh, with that that sequence that you're in uh, at the table in the bar, um, did was that like prosthetic alien thing in the wall the entire time you filmed, or was that something added in post? No, he was there, and it was kind of a treat because I work in sci-fi so much where nothing's there. <laughs> <laughs> he was there he was talking the lights were going I mean it was, it was it was really it was really pretty cool for you know somebody like me who's used to being given an eyeline creating it all in my my imagination you know and how how do you manage to keep your for uh better uh, lack of a better term keep your shit together when uh Tim Robinson or uh, when the was it Tim Heidecker? I'm trying to remember who you were. Heidecker, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. So when you were with Tim Heidecker at the table um, and he was just, you know, saying these ridiculous things, how did you keep your your shit together? Shit because together I, I could see that obviously you're smiling in, in the scene, but you manage not to lose it. At, at least what's on camera, you manage not to, you know, start laughing. Did it take multiple takes or were you able to just hold yourself together the entire time? I held it together every time. And it wasn't that I didn't think he was funny. It's just that I come from a training background where you actually believe everything that you're doing and that you're living. So for me, it was real. You know, I was being that character and I was going through that experience, which in her situation wouldn't be funny. You know, <laughs> it's like... And so I, I kind of took it at face value because I think that's, you know, that's the best thing to do with comedy. You have to have the straight guy. You got to have the person that takes it in. No, I never lost it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I want to switch gears and talk about, is it called the time wars? Uh, it's, it is. So your uh, lead role in that. And from what I understand, it's a series, but it's, it, is it eight hours long? It is. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what that project is? Sure, it's a, it's a time travel um, series, and it's basically Adolf Hitler traveling through time, rewriting history because he has a messiah complex. So he's rewriting his genetic code, and I play not just his daughter but also his nemesis. So it's um, it's the darkest thing I've ever done, 
and um, a lot of different time periods and a lot of different um, versions of my characters. So it's definitely the most complicated thing I've ever done because different versions get plucked through time. Um, and of course they have different experiences and different outlooks and different appearances and different, you know, everything really. So um, that is, that is a, a deep, dark, twisted series that started out as a, as a movie and then it just kept growing and growing. And next thing we know, we're going to another few countries to film. And next thing, you know, and it's like, you just keep getting these phone calls and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's super exciting to see it come to fruition because we actually started on this, started filming about five years ago, but the original script is about 15 years old. So it's the pet project of the, of the director and it has just grown massively. Yeah. When is that, um, is it something that's already started airing or is that something that is coming out in the future? It's coming out in the very near future. Okay. It's on that's... The final stages of post and um, me and the other cast members are kind of like just pinching ourselves that, it, that it's actually coming to fruition. Because <laughs> we went through so much for it that it's just very exciting when a big, big long-term project is nearing its end. Yeah. Did you do any sci-fi like time travel stuff uh, before you worked on this project or is that something you had to do some research in to kind of understand how all the, the laws of time travel work? I'm kind of a sci-fi junkie. Like since I was a little kid, so I've watched a million things with, with time travel. You know, of course I've done films before that were sci-fi, but this is the first time that I have the experience of the time travel. And it's really funny how you do it for so long and you do so many different scenes and so many different places and you start to kind of buy it yourself. You know? <laughs> that, that makes real life a little less interesting because you're, you're stuck and you are grounded by the rules of if you already drop something, you can't go back and not drop it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I, I would say we broke a couple of the rules um but mostly because the characters had to interact with each other so you know it, there was like you know an army of characters and and um so you had to break a couple of the rules like the touching rule and stuff like that but um it's it's its own beast you know it's it's an it, you don't have to necessarily follow the rules even though we all know about the rules of time travel because it's kind of like when you die in sci-fi, you can always come back. It doesn't mean your character's gone, you know? So, so I think that, that you kind of, you know, you have to, you have to trust the material and when it, and when the, when the director and the writer, when they hand it to you, you just have to make it be, you know, this is, this is the way it is now. So. Is there any kind of subgenre of sci-fi that you haven't had a chance to explore that you are particularly interested in based on the movies that you've loved growing up? Or do you feel like you've, you've gotten such a, uh, a chance to explore different things based on all the projects that you've already done? In, in, in the realm of sci-fi, I would say that this was kind of the last major thing that I could think of um, that, that I hadn't gotten to participate in was time travel. You know, so it's like between all the different projects that I've done, it's I've, I've pretty much gotten to touch all those little things that we wanted to touch as kids, you know, and we'd watch them. And then I also think, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a segue, but I also think that that real life is getting a little bit of a touch of sci-fi. You know, a lot of the, the things that we're doing now, I mean, Bezos went to space today, you know, and, and things like that. So all the things that we're not experiencing and exploring in television series and film they're exploring in real life so it's 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 a pretty exciting time yeah science fiction they say is a precursor to science fact so that's definitely interesting people get their ideas and say oh well what if that could really happen yeah um, I was looking a little bit into your biography and I found uh, that in the past you had done some, I don't know, was it directorial or writer's work? I know that you did some like production or stuff behind the scenes. Um, have you specifically been doing projects just staying on camera now or do you still uh, do a little bit behind the camera work? I do, I do production. I'm actually very, very good at it. <laughs> um, I'm very good at, at the organizational and the, the um, you know, the high pressure and, and just figuring things out. To me, it's just a puzzle. But um, so, and I've done that since the 90s. 
but um, I, I will not help produce when I am on camera. So it's like if I'm on camera, even if I've helped with all of the pre-production with the casting, with this, that, and the other thing, and even if I've helped with someone else's project, which I do too, as soon as I put on my character hat, I have to hand over the other hat because I can't be a character and also be a producer. So it's, it's, it's just kind of my little trick that works for me is you have to work with people that you trust so much that you can defer to them when it comes time you're shooting. So I absolutely loved the biz love the business end of it and stuff like that, but I do have to be able to put it down. I found that Tracy can be a producer, but all the various characters can't. Yeah. Which would you prefer to explore more going forward? Well, I absolutely love performing. There is nothing that gets my socks off better than performing. It's, um, I love taking on other people. Like ever since I was a little kid, I love watching people and studying them and thinking about what they do. To me, there are no, although there's bad people, there's criminals and stuff like that. There are no bad people. Like everybody's fascinating to me. And I've gotten to explore what it's like to be so many different personalities and so many different people that it's kind of my childhood hobby come into my adult life. And so I'd like to continue playing for the rest of my life. And um, I'll also, I'll use my brain on the side and, and produce. So I, I think I have the perfect blend. You know, I think it's actually the perfect blend for me. Do you feel like there's a specific project that you've done um, that your younger self would like their mind would be blown by like if there's one specifically that you kind of squealed about when you were doing it or is that something that you kind of feel like every time you're on screen that you're fulfilling that like inner child of yourself um, I feel it every time that I'm on screen but I do have to say when I did Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter because I'm such a tomboy and I used to do all these things that the only boys were supposed to do and you know I got to run down giant mountains and have machine gun fights with giant robots and and that's stuff that my little girl self would have just gone nuts over. So I would say that that was kind of that moment, but I've gotten to do it since then as other characters. And that character is living on too, because there is a series based upon Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter that's actually in the can also. Nice. Um, so, so with, I know there's a lot of stuff that like you had said with uh, the pandemic things, you know, get filmed, you don't ever know what's going to happen. Is there anything else that you have in the works right now that you would like to talk about or plug at all? Well, Age of Darkness is the, is the future of Rogue Warrior. It's a series based upon Rogue Warrior. And I would say that'll be out the first part of, of this coming year would be my guess. Um, and then there's another film that I shot over in Australia, literally just before the pandemic hit and it's called Hotel Underground and it's kind of a deep, dark, twisted um, uh, fight film. So um, that, that one's really fun, but I have no idea when these things are coming out because you get stuck in the pandemic and you have all these things in post and you just go, okay, they'll be out when they're out because the, really the fun part is doing it and filming it and when it comes out, that's not as much of the fun part. It was when we got to have premieres and stuff like that. But even that's kind of died down. So I'd rather just keep working. <laughs> yeah, I totally, I totally understand. And especially like if there's something you're not on the production side of, you really don't know what's next. You know, I like that's something I hear, you know, from a lot of the actors or performers I speak with. It's like I do my part and then it's maybe two years later something shows up i i don't know um so that's it seems to like pretty much line up with what i've heard from everybody else do you have um before i wrap is there anything that you would like like website wise or social media wise to direct uh listeners and your fans to sure um, I, I still have an old fashioned website <laughs> so it's www.tracybirdsall.com and it also works as a hub. So it has links to my IMDb, my Twitter, which is Tracy Birdsall one my Instagram, which is Tracy Birdsall one and my Facebook, which is Tracy Birdsall official. Nice. Um, and is there any last things that you would like to say? Otherwise I can just kind of end it there. I just want to make sure that everybody has a platform to, you know, say anything that there's, uh, they don't get asked or that they would like to, uh, I know you kind of plug stuff, but just make sure you have a platform to say anything at the end that you might want to. Well, you know, for me, it's like, I think, I think life is our platform, you know, and hopefully 
I have life lessons that other people can can learn from and stuff. I think that a a good life lesson I like to bring up that has happened to me in my life is that um, I've I've pretty much always been in this industry, and it wasn't until you know people tell you how much time you have to work on something, and so you're thinking, okay, I got to put four hours into this, I got to put eight hours into this. It wasn't until I started putting everything I had into something when I had a project, absolutely everything that I wouldn't say that I just became a consistent actor. I became a consistent actor that then was consistent on, on top of consistent. So people always say, what does it take? Um, it takes everything, you know, it takes everything that you have. And when you get a project, you put everything else aside and you just focus on that, whether it's an audition, whether it's a film, whether it's, you know, a series, whatever it is. And um, I think that, I think that was a really a tough lesson for me to learn in life. So I think that it's a good lesson for everybody else. Nothing's enough. <laughs> Joe's Inner Child Podcast.